When you feel crunched for space on your single laptop screen, you reach for an external monitor solution. I've got no problem plugging in my MacBook Pro into two monitors, either directly by using two USB-C to display port cables or by using one Thunderbolt cable going to a dock and then to the monitors. You can now freely drag windows between the main laptop screen and the other two monitors, giving you so much more real estate space that you don't even know what you're gonna do with it. Now that was the MacBook Pro. What about the MacBook Air? Based on the comments that I've seen on my MacBook Air reviews, it's the lack of multiple monitor screen support that keeps you away from considering the MacBook Air. It's the biggest drawback. Ah. Just one, what about this one? And this is the problem. Now I know what you're gonna say, there's been a lot of workarounds and people have tried different things, but the problem is I've never actually tried it myself because I use a MacBook Pro so I can plug in the monitors just like this, no problem. And this little device is supposed to help me overcome my MacBook Air problem. Gigimundo, Jigimundo? Gigimundo? I don't know, but I'm gonna link to this thing down below as well as this knife. This thing is my favorite knife. I love this thing. This is it, huh? We've got three USB A's, a display port and an HDMI and another HDMI. Okay, so for the first display, you can use either DP, display port or HDMI. And for the second display, only HDMI or DP. It's on this side. <laughs> and you got ethernet too, just in case. No USB-C though, that's kind of a bummer, but you can connect it through USB-C to the actual machine. All right, so let's unplug this guy. This is the OWC Thunderbolt dock, by the way. I really like this thing. It's really powerful. It's got Thunderbolt 4, but it does not handle this situation, which hopefully this little device will. Let's plug that in. So I'm gonna use HDMI. Plugged in the first one, but it hasn't come on yet. No signal. Do I need to do anything here? What's going on? I got nothing. I got a big old no signal. All right, let's try the other side. Nothing. No signal on that one too. Uh, you're gonna make me read instructions? Come on. It says you need to download the drivers. Here we go. I feel very cozy and comfortable doing this, by the way. Not really. The licensing agreement uh, where uh, they might take your soul. I actually don't know if they're gonna take your soul or not. <laughs> don't, don't quote me on that. Agree, install, give my password to my soul. Okay, now I don't think we're done yet. Oh, whoa, whoa, did you see that? These things came on. <laughs> okay, people, this thing officially works. Let's rearrange these. So my main display is gonna be here. This one's gonna be to the left, and this one is a little bit to the right. That matches the picture, right? Now we're only getting 1920 by 1080, but what if we go up to here, 4K, whoa. It's handling it. Refresh rate goes up to 60, but that's just because the monitor supports only up to 60. Hey, look at that. It's working. So when I'm moving the window, I'm seeing some smudges going on here and I'm not a big fan of smudges. It's not super smooth. It's enough to kind of look at. I do wonder if I get a display port cable, if it's gonna be a little bit better on one of these. It is usable. So why is it that the OWC dock can't do it and this Giggy dock can? Well, it has to do with the technology known as display link. This is not to be confused with display port, which is the connection type on your monitor. Display link is a technology that lets you send a video signal to a display over USB or Wi-Fi instead of HDMI or display port and it requires special software which is what I just installed on my MacBook Air and also special hardware a chip that lives inside this little box the software compresses the data to be sent to the monitor the data is sent to the dock via USB and the chip inside here decompresses the data and sends it off to the monitor either via HDMI or DisplayPort. Now DisplayLink has been around long before Apple Silicon Max and they claim to have pixel perfect graphics. From what I'm seeing here, it's not bad, but I wonder how system performance will be affected or if I can notice any drawbacks. I am noticing that my mouse is kind of lagging a little bit. So um, I don't know what's going on there. I do have uh, an external mouse. This is the GPU history and this is what it looked like before I plugged these two in. And this is what it looks like now. So definitely quite a lot of GPU usage going on right now. 
I'm gonna run my benchmark for machine learning on the GPU. <laughs> <laughs> this is not gonna be a definitive result, just so you know. If you wanna see that, I made a video on that recently. I'll link to it down below. This is gonna be more of a torture test because uh, I don't think this machine is gonna like it too much. Oh yeah, so my mouse is barely moving. By the way, this is a base model MacBook Air. Eight gigabytes of RAM, 256 gigabytes of storage, and we're completely maxing out the GPU right now. You can drag that over there drag that over here definitely getting some bugs like slowdowns weird freezes as i'm dragging the window all right here is the result 86.89 it's actually not bad um the score i got without everything plugged in was 89 for the gpu and i explain more about what that means in the other video but basically that means that it's not having that much of a detrimental effect on the gpu maybe the overall usage is up in general but you still get those spikes of availability when you need it the main screen is still just as usable as before and you have two extra screens. This is actually not bad. I kind of dig this. Wow, this thing is really, really warm too. But uh, that's probably just something that can be managed. Something I missed, uh, this does say power delivery 100 watts through USB-C on the box. And I found where that is. There is a USB-C port on the side of this thing. I also have a display port cable and I'm gonna see if there's a difference in image quality. Yes, there is a difference in the image quality when you're using a display port cable instead of the HDMI cable, but that's not any different than what I see from my MacBook Pro. When I use display port to the monitor, it actually looks better than HDMI to the monitor. But as far as the jankiness and the usability you're still getting 60 hertz refresh rate so it's still gonna be choppy just like it used to be now on the macbook pro with the external displays you're still limited to the refresh rate of the external displays it's not gonna help you out that you're using a macbook pro or not is the jankiness related to the device or is it related to the fact that this is a base model macbook air well i'm gonna shut this one down because i've got another macbook air here that has 24 gigabytes of ram and we're gonna see if we get the same result here it's a bit smaller than the other one. This is a 13 inch, but it should do the trick. The 8GB machine was maxed out and had 4GB of swap being used because I had all sorts of software running on it, Xcode, Docker, etc. On this 24GB model, I'm using the same software. It's using 14GB of RAM with no swapping. Consequently, there's no freezing of the mouse here, leading me to conclude that this was in fact a RAM issue on the 8GB model. Does this thing do what it's supposed to do? It does. It doesn't give you the Thunderbolt 4 options like you would get with the OWC dock, but it does have lots of display options if that's what you need. If you got a MacBook Air and you desperately need two external monitors, this might be a good solution for you. Now, what about that price? Not the cheapest thing you'll ever find. There's lots of $20 and $30 docks out there, but this one is not that cheap. Now, of course, there's other functions that this dock offers, like super speed USB. Does anybody even say that anymore? Each one of the three USB A ports on this thing has a 10 next to it, so 10 gigabyte transfer rates. And the Ethernet Ethernet port, not labeled. One gigabit Ethernet, not the craziest speed either, but it has it. So you don't need any special extra adapters when you wanna plug in the ethernet and get faster speeds than Wi-Fi, or if that's your only option. So overall, it does what it says it does, and you're gonna pay for it. But it's still cheaper than the Thunderbolt 4 dock from OWC. Hopefully you found this interesting and useful. If you did, go ahead and give this video a like. I really appreciate it. Thank you for coming, and I will see you in the next video.